any adjustments to the agenda? Great. All right, then we'll go um, to the, yes. Actually, uh, I'd like to add um, possibly can, can you, in conjunction with the auditorium roof um, temperature monitors for the high school when you were repurposing is ready to on some temperature mon mon monitors and also the people to go and check them. Okay, uh, I think we can have that 7-3 as part of um, high school. Okay, we have the minutes from August 7th in front of us. Is there, uh, is there a motion to approve those minutes? Are there any adjustments that need to be made? I so move. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any adjustments or questions or comments? All right. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Great. The consent agenda passes. Uh, do we have public comment? No public. No public. Okay. Well, then let's move on to board comment. Um, just have one. I had the honor of being at the White River Valley Supervisory Union kickoff meeting at the Wildcats, uh, home of the Wildcats, um, and on Monday. When was the date on that? 28th. Uh, 28th, yeah. And this is an opportunity. This is for the whole team. This your team is together in one room. Uh, celebrating, I think, their return and also kind of recommitting themselves to why they're there. And uh, uh, Jamie led the charge, and uh, and then they, um, after a very interesting presentation, um, um, they uh, uh, went to their various schools for for continued. Um, this is the second year I've been there, and I, you know, I'm a I'm a, I'm a positive guy, but I read a lot about how body language and just kind of the feel for people. And this year, um, the feeling in the auditorium, not the auditorium, excuse me, in the gym, uh, everybody sitting in the bleachers was just, was really great. Um, and uh, Jamie just has that feel for and connecting with his team. And I felt the team just were happy to be back. I, you know, I'm sure there's issues and, and challenges ahead. Um, but I've been in organizations where um, you don't always have that. You've got, oh, why am I here? People are looking at their watches. Uh, they're talking while somebody is, well, instead of listening. And that wasn't the case here. And, and part of that presentation on that, that, that says suicide, you could hear a pin drop. Um, so I think that uh, is one indicator of how fortunate we are to be part of an SU that is strong, committed, and psyched from the top all the way through that. I just wanted to share that with you. That's great. I'm, I'm really glad you're able to go, Bill, and have some school board representation. Oh, well, uh, there. Yeah, really those great. of you that have to work for a living. <laughs> right. Uh, um, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm blessed. Yeah, it was wonderful. Thank you. Great. Is there any further board comment? Okay, well then let's move on to the superintendent's report. <coughs> yeah, so you have my report in hand. I um, <coughs> I did want to just um, highlight uh, a couple things. One, we are still down on bus in Bethel, which is creating some problems for us. I think we've sorted a lot of it out for our tuition <coughs> students from Rochester, Stockbridge, getting to our high school on time. Uh, because we utilize that third Bethel bus to help with that. We have partnered with Tri-Valley Transit. We can get students to school on time via Tri-Valley Transit, and we have figured out how to get them home on a normal time now via our yellow bus. We're providing two different options, so they can use the public transportation. If they don't want to do that, we're still running a yellow bus from Rochester to Stockbridge to Royalton. But it gets there about 20 minutes late um, to start the school day. We're hoping to have that final driver in place by the end of the month. Uh, test. We have a driver actually hired. Testing got held up during the floods in Montpelier. Um, 
And so that's what's pushed us back. So the good news is we were down four drivers at the end of last year. We're still we're down one, but it's just because they haven't passed the test. So good news is um, we'll be fully staffed here in the next couple of weeks, which I'm excited about um, mm -hmm. having brought in a new contract and stuff. So you said um, use by using Tri Valley Transit, we can we, are able we can to get still get kids time. there on time okay. if they want to use Tri Valley. Some folks are public transportations. Okay. We're running it from every sending district to our high school. Okay. Plus, we're running yellow buses. I would say some folks are using Tri Valley, and yeah, that just goes it, right now. Have, actually, that's actually our late bus. So we're running a late bus from our high school all the way to here and to Rochester in case kids are doing activities. Sports. Very nice. Um, What's the cost to families or to the district nothing, for a drive? Not, we're using our community schools grant, okay. and Rudd's covering the the additional costs. The White River Unified District will cover it. Okay. As we see it as part of a service, yeah. right, to our sending town. So there's no cost here. Um, one of the things, though, and I will talk about it at Granville Hancock that I've been trying to get in place, and it, the timing has not worked out, is being able to leverage Tri Valley Transit from your Rochester campus to Granville Hancock for oh. your after school programming for our students that attend from mm. those tuition towns. Um, Mike Reedier, Reedier, Probably that last name. Yeah, um, his 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 partner, his wife's actually on the Granville Hancock board now. He's working hard to try to make it work. He just hasn't been able to get the timing worked out. Um, it's just too late by the time they get over there. So mm. that is still on my radar mm. because I do think that that would be a good thing. Is if we had a late bus that could run up and hit a couple stops up there um, for after school programming. I've heard from Granville Hancock families that that would be a real desire. And Lindy, she'll talk about it later in her report, but we are up some tuition students there last this year that didn't that we saw down last year. So that's good news for us at ARSA. Um, so anyways, I just want to update on that because it was impacting some of our families mm -hmm. um, in our set attending our middle and high school, but should be solved in the next few weeks. Otherwise, I've been thrilled with how transportation has actually kicked off. It was one of the things I was anxious about just having a new transportation provider and some new drivers and uh, we actually did keep all your pretty much all your RC right. drivers um, actually it's funny the Windsor Northwest drivers that originally worked for us our uh, our retention there was, was almost 100 mm. percent one driver didn't stay um, it was just interesting because I think they're really loyal to to these schools right yes. like it's the company they know yeah, yeah. So much to them yeah. as where, you know, we had some drivers leave in um, Royalton. So I was just a little anxious about brand new drivers, mm -hmm. you know, dialing in routes and things, how it would go, but um, it actually went well. I was, you know, I don't know if anyone followed the news about in Kentucky where they, it, yeah, it took them five hours to get kids home. Kids didn't get home until almost 10 o'clock at night. Oh, so yeah. That was, you know, that gets you anxious. As we're all clear by 4 o'clock. Wow. We were in, we, it, it went that well. went up in the hollow. Trying, um, around, trying to drop kids the off. The other thing I really wanted to highlight um, is out of my report, and then I'll take questions, is um, that we're going to be hosting a table at the Tunbridge Fair. Um, and we're doing that. I've had a couple of boards say, so what's the real goal of that? Well, the real goal of that for me is, you know, we hold these community conversations and things to try to share the work we're doing. And when we really just need to get in the community and share the work we're doing. And so, I, you know, it's one of these goals for me to start to model for our schools, but as an organization, like, we've got to get out in the community. We can't expect folks to have the time to necessarily come in our walls. And so, my hope is it's a, a way for us to share the work we've done with our strategic plan, share some of um, the exciting things that we have happening um, academically, um, talk to them about some of the work that we've done in our buildings without having to go to bond. I just think we have a lot of things to help educate our community about. Um, our communications uh, coordinator and Ray and I are going to meet to give uh, like a one to two page bullet point thing for folks that are manning the table so that they just have things that they can talk to folks about. And then we'll have, um, we've already started working on brochures that we'll have for folks. That, uh, we'll have strategic plan available. We've got a one-page application that folks can fill out if they're interested mm -hmm. in 
subbing, mentoring, mm -hmm. custodial, smart. like, very smart. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. paraeducators. Yeah. Frankly, I still need a music teacher and Sharon. Like, and we're gonna have a list of what we're looking for, mm -hmm. so folks could just fill it out, and so we can then have that to follow up with folks. So that's really the purpose um, for this year, and we'll see how it goes. We've got some pencils to give out, some stickers <laughs> to try to just draw some interest and get possibly kids to bring. Their their, Lang, for their sure. folks yeah. to come over so that they'll talk with us. So, and we're going to be in the pavilion, which is right near the pig racing. Yep. Great. I did want to comment on your um, report. You do talk about the um, full board presentation that on a, um, yeah, on the Adams did, um, and I was at that meeting, and it was a wonderful report. It was such a, it was a report for such a celebration of. Of the learning that is happening in our different schools um there's three different schools and those three kind of different um techniques that were being used uh and i would definitely recommend that anybody has time to take a look at that video it's really really good thanks yeah. bill yeah a couple of comments one is um i'm really pleased how well with that hiccup on that driver, um, um, but having accessible transportation that's convenient to parents mm -hmm. is a essential building block if we're going to expand um, the tuition students here now. And so that's, I mean, that's just huge. And uh, the superintendent has provided um, a made this a priority we've changed companies we've got um the bus drivers are joining us because there's a credibility with this su um but if kids from outside can't get here or can't get home or they can't rely on us and that's where the hiccup can we're going to have to uh we're not going to get there as far as in growth uh, the growth in our enrollment and we have to have that growth if we're going to get the state aid we need and be able to finance uh, the educational resources and uh, now obviously the results have to be there and that's where we've been heartened by the efforts of our of our teachers uh, and uh, the systems and I like to believe uh, that our set had the highest uh, results uh, for both math and in reading in SU not that we're competing so much but um, that's important, and our teachers are coming through with with Lindsay, Lindy's um, leadership. Um, I also want to mention that the mentoring. Um, my son is um, led efforts on mentoring. He's got a, a little company doing that. It um, was part of his effort with Tufts University, and uh, it's so powerful uh, to have somebody that you can connect with, listen to um have your back and uh, also guide you through and and make suggestions on what they might be doing better or who they might need to talk to all those things come through and so the fact that we're doing that and really focusing on that is going to pay benefits um new teachers boy they have a a, a, a troubling start uh, that could last the whole year and then are they going to stay with us so it's and the, the, the kids are penalized for that so that's another huge thing um the ecu climber uh, i'm a big data guy but there's a difference between data and information and what it sounds like what you're doing through this system as well as other things you're doing is you're taking data which is numbers and formulas and everything else and package it in a way that you you can understand what they mean and with that understanding of what they mean then you can take action and it sounds like this the system is combining a number of different uh, data points or whatever you want to call it columns and and help them tie those together and make them worthwhile for our teachers and our administrative leadership um, does that have a name or do we just call it the data warehouse tool well it's it's called edu climber it's edu climber thank yeah, you um and finally the tonbridge affair Again, we need to let people know what great things are happening with this SU. And we've got to, I don't know about you, but 
reputations are hard to overcome. If you get a negative reputation, how do you show people that things have changed? How do you show people that we're one of the best if they've got that negative thing? So one way we have to work hard on, and that's where transportation, that's where quality results, the ton of insurance is another small way that we can connect with and get people excited about what we're doing. And maybe they go, oh, gee, I'm going to give it a second look. Um, so all those things make sense to me, and I uh, just commend what you're doing and like that to continue. Absolutely. You're here. And then finally, I'll just say I've been in both your buildings, and um, things feel really good. I'm, Lindy's going to go into that more, but just as, you know, Lindy's here every day, and I'll say as the superintendent being in each building, um, I, I'm really pleased to see uh, routines happening, and classrooms look good. Nice. I'm happy. That's encouraging. That's great. Thank you. Is there any uh, other comment or question to the superintendent on his report? Okay, well, let's move on to the festivals report then. Yes, yeah, so you have uh, my report in front of you. I didn't feel like there was a lot to write about between August and September, but there definitely is a lot that's happened. Yeah. <laughs> beginning with just we opened school successfully um we are very fortunate that a majority of our drivers came back bus wise so that piece has gone really smooth for families um we also have more um students from granville hancock this year than we did last year so we're um taking a step in the right direction there to continue for those folks from surrounding communities to join us to help with our revenue, but also we're just happy to have them with us. Um, I think the biggest thing that the kids will tell you right now is tomorrow is Beat the Heat celebration in the afternoon. Uh, because they've done, they being teachers and kids and staff have done an amazing job keeping up practicing routines and keeping with expectations when it's uncomfortable. The way I'm going to word it. I'm not going to complain that it's too warm, but uncomfortable for kiddos. They've done a great job. They've been out for outdoor ed. They've been out for PE. They're drinking lots of water. They're having a great time. So we have popsicle and sprinkler time tomorrow afternoon at about 2.20, I think is what we talked about. Um, so they're very excited about that. Lots of smiles leaving school. Did you know you're giving us popsicles tomorrow? <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, so that's great. We have, in addition to that, we also have two pair educators uh, that will be joining us starting Monday in Rochester with some spots that we had kind of had to shuffle people. Um, and then the person who originally met with for the kindergarten position in Rochester decided not to come. So we did have to make a last minute combination um, of a K-1. And that's where one of the parent educators will go in place of, um, in place of a classroom teacher. What is the um, size of the class? There's yeah. 18 in that class. Yeah. So, and very busy. 18 yeah. is the way I would describe that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Miss C, Megan, um, Cornelia does a great job with them and has taught kindergarten before. Um, so it was a natural thing, and she was. Very willing. Is she uh, a veteran teacher with this us? This is or? her third year with us. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yes, I guess. But she's not on the new ones. <laughs> no, no, she's okay. not. Um, and so we have some combined activities coming up for the month of uh, September. Both four, five, six groups will be going to the Tenbridge Fair together uh, next Thursday uh, for agriculture and education, and to see some classmates show. I think it's the way that's going to work out schedule-wise as well. Okay. Yep. And then um, we're also participating again with the Conservation Corps and the White River Valley Forest yeah, Association to go snorkeling really as great. well, which they are all excited about. And was something each group asked to be able to do again for their new teacher. So we are up and running. And then we'll talk about buildings when we get to E and <laughs> Capital Improvement. So. Okay. Any questions? Sounds exciting. It is. It really does. It is. And reading through. Feels good, too. Yeah, that's wonderful. I did have one thing if I could just add yeah, to her that I meant to mention to you guys that I didn't write in, is uh, through the community school grant, this is our final year. Uh, so 
the middle school in Bethel is actually who buy and were the recipients of the grant, came through the SU, and it was written that it would focus on the middle school, then expand to the high school, and then expand across the SU year three. So one of the things we're looking to get approved in that that grant is, um, and I think we will, we've pretty much got preliminary approval already, Tara, on most of those things in that grant. Yes, that's correct. Uh, we're gonna help fund uh, to get the, finalize the repaving of the skate park um, in Rochester. Nice. So we were able to put in, I think what, Tara, 15,000? Toward helping them finish their- Yes. Oh, that's yeah. great. So I just wanted to mention that. Uh, Wonderful. That is a great space to. Well, it's a good community space. I mean, it yeah, fits. It, in, and it fits at the heart of what that grants about. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, um, I really like to hear that the new teachers are getting immersed in bridges and in direct instruction, mm -hmm. um, and we only have like three weeks before they're tested, aren't they? And with the track my progress uh into september right the window opens that into september yep. so that gives us some chance to kind of recoup what might have been lost through fun and frolic in our summertime <laughs> um before they go into track my progress um hopefully there's to me there's there's a, a tendency to sag and that and our um, um one planet program should help fill that. I was a little confused about, is it decibels or decibels? Uh, dibbles. Dibbles. Yeah. Dibbles and um, Track My Progress. So um, Track My Progress is a universal screener. That's what you see the results of when we do our academic data presentation. Um, and I think we're in November this year because of the window to start. Uh, dibbles is something every K through kindergarten through second grade student does, and it's a diagnostic tool, meaning uh, kids are reading words off what's called a nonsense word list and a phonics list to be able to make sure that there's no gaps in decoding or phonemic awareness. That helps us target specific skills. So the goal with that data is that independent workstations for kids will be structured on what the group needs. So if there's three or four kiddos in a classroom that are struggling uh, knowing, understanding the consonant, vowel consonant sound, for example, that would be a workplace where they work on that in addition to getting the direct instruction piece. So it kind of supplements. They're kind of measuring sure. different skills. They, yeah. Yeah. Oh, different different skills. Well, yeah, I mean, Track My Progress does some foundational skills, but I would say those computer-based assessments doesn't give us a, as deep of a dive right. as this Dibbles data could. Well. Um, and it's a pretty quick only five uh, minutes assessment, and it's done with a teacher and student. Yeah. And it's specific for uh, phonetic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's really Very focused specific. on phonemic words. Yeah, okay, that's well, that's the baseline now. Yeah. Very much so. <laughs> so great. That's, it's great. Yeah. Great. The other thing was that I recall um, when we were asking you about projected enrollments for this year. Yeah. Um, for our study, you thought, as my recollection was, we're pretty much was going to be roughly the same. And is is uh, now we've got an uptick. Sounds like in Rochester, do we have roughly the same in Stockbridge? So are we slightly up, or we're the same? Um, um, um we had several families uh, moved out families who started with us last year and uh, finished with us last year, but then moved out over the summer. So we're we're about the same as what we started out last year. And then in Stockbridge, we saw a little bit of an uptick and it kind of plateaued, but we're right about the same as where we started. So those, it, it seems, like I'm like, those that start with us from the beginning in Stockbridge stay with us all the way through, where we see a lot of movement lately in the past couple of years is those who come in partway through those families that are kind of huh. yeah just different depending on you know the family transient. yeah a little more transient great is there any other questions or comments on um 
the principal's report. This isn't uh, from the report, but um, it's about the school, and I was excited to hear about music from Alder. Um, it seems really he's like he's already learned how eight, about eighth notes, uh, eighth notes and quarter notes in the first week. I'm like, wow, there, he's really hitting the technique hard. So it's pretty cool to hear, and I'm happy that there's music. So I just wanted to say that. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Uh, that, is, that is pretty exciting for right off the bat. And, and how old is he? He's six, so first grade. So he's already playing games with, with uh, eighth notes and quarter notes. And I'm like, wow. And you didn't, you know, like that seems quick to just know that already. It's awesome. That's great. Yep. Excellent. Anyone else? All right, let's move on to the um, business manager report. You have my report for the month of September, which just identifies a few of the deadlines that we have happening in the business office for the month of September. This is a good month for us to get caught up on getting the rest of fiscal year 23 wrapped up and making sure everything's in place for fiscal year 24. So we look forward to the less number of reports that are due during the month of September. <laughs> And then if there's any questions on my report itself, otherwise we can move to the fiscal year 23 end of year projections. Sure. So this is a look at financials as of June 30th. Um, I identified a few of the line items that we were overspent on, and then also the line items that we have some savings on in the budget. So overall, uh, right now, it looks like we are projected to have $110,356,000 in savings on the expenditure side of the budget. And then on the revenue, which we had known throughout the year, we were low on tuition. Um, so overall, we had about an $81,000 deficit on the revenue side. So right now, based on the savings and expenditures, deficit and revenue, we're looking at potentially a $28,844 surplus at the close of the fiscal year. There has been some revenue um, that came in late, which will be adjusted and added into fiscal year 23, including uh, that donation check to offset the Rochester High School heating system. So that will also yeah. help. Okay, great. So that's a uh, twelve thousand plus. Yeah, that was twelve thousand four hundred and thirty-six dollars. <laughs> we did, if I remember right, we were picking up on this revenue shortfall. We did adjust accordingly for this year. If you guys remember, when we built the budget, we yes. decreased yes. the revenue. Yeah, the tuition. Yeah. yeah. Now the good news is we're, we'll be able to let you know in the next month where that comes out. But just want you to know, we had. Projected that shortfall, so we adjusted accordingly in this current budget. And then, if there's any questions on that, that's all I got for you tonight. Well, the only guy who's not a question is a comment. I'm, it's great to have $28,000 projected in the black rather than uh, something in the red. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, kudos to everybody on the team that administered the contract and our financial management team that tracked everything, guided everything to make it come together. And it won't always that be. There's surprises in, uh, in public education, just huge. So to be able to do this, it's not something to me you just take for granted. I mean, there could be outside forces that can really hurt you. So um, feel good about this. Now are we dividing that by the six by the board members is twenty eight thousand dollars. Don't me on that, Ray. Right, please, that was a joke. <laughs> Parker heard you. <laughs> you won't capture. Uh, <laughs> no, that that is good. Um, I do not have any questions. Does anybody else have any questions for Tara on? Um, this uh, for FY22, 23 projection. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Tara. 
Um, WRBSU policy committee update. Yeah, so um, the policy committee had quite a, a bit of different feedback that they had received um, in regards to all three policies you had last month. So they did a bunch of work this past month, brought those uh, edits to the full board. The full board was feeling supportive of those. Um, and so, and some of it was based on the feedback you provided even um, in regards to the WRBSU access control visitor management policy and the fire and emergency preparedness drill policy. So what I'm doing is finalizing those drafts. Those will be worn for action at the full board level for September. And then we'll look for local district boards uh, to take action. In October for us then? Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's for two policies? All three. What is the third? The third one was your, if you remember back to that board member conduct that we've been working oh, on. Oh, that was for, a couple times ago. Yeah. Okay. In the policy committee, there was enough feedback that they needed to draft okay. it, but I think now we're in a really good place for that where I felt like the full board felt good about it. So um, we're going to go ahead and warn it and see what happens. Okay. The um, Yeah, and so that will put those three uh, through. And then my goal really is to now get to a place, hopefully, where we can start to, I know you're going to talk about it at, at part of your retreat agenda, but even at the policy committee level, there's a lot of policies that got put through based on just the merger and needing to get policy in the place that we need to really look at now. Um, it's crazy to think I'm going into year four and we've really been continuing to just build new policy the whole time. Um, but now I really want to get to a place of being able to look at policies, prioritize, and, and revise over the next like 16 months. Absolutely. So just to give you kind of a sense of where we're heading, it's great. So a bunch of these, well, you know, I think as a board, we'll be reviewing, you're going to start to see we're going to be reviewing a bunch of our policies with possible revisions. Okay. Um, the policy committee is going to focus on, to yeah, on. to decide what do we want to prioritize and then how do we want to go about it. Absolutely, yeah. They're there. That's what their purpose is, is to have them and to revisit them and report on them. Great. Okay, uh, so there's no questions on the policy committee update. That is the one thing. I sorry. I, okay. I well, it just it's the one thing in an SU. I think I'm finding like, you know, we have s seven boards counting the SU board. That policy does take us to do it well and to get feedback and for us to try to incorporate all the feedback. I do find it. it most policies take us about six months. <laughs> It's crazy. I mean, it seems like a long time, but by the time, you know, boards read the first reading and we take that feedback, I mean, I think one of the feedback that I've been receiving is that boards feel like the policy committee is really trying to implement feedback from across all mm -hmm. the boards to get to a place where folks feel good. Absolutely. But I am finding, for, at least for our brand new policies, that it's been averaging almost six months to find. Yeah. Okay. I don't think there's anything negative about that it depends on how you spend the six months if the six months is the policy committee trying to get it right yeah and the district boards diving into it and we're learning absolutely and so we, second draft third draft it started to get reinforced to us and then we're uh, being able to to to, to make the, the policy better so i think that time's well spent and uh, i don't think the measure is in timely doesn't necessarily timeliness it's the quality and the input it seems like they're doing it right I really feel um, like they're hearing the local boards and, and really yeah. taking into bringing it back. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, okay, let's move on to 71 EEI capital improvements at Rochester Stockbridge update. Yeah. And these right on top of this stuff. So. Uh, trying to be. I did ask them today if they're going to come train me in a couple of so let's see, uh, here in Stockbridge, there's two things left to finish the up updates to lighting in the classrooms. The hallway is actually already done. Um, so you can take a look out. It's kind of cool. You don't even hit a light switch anymore. It's a little eerie, but it's cool. Um, and much more efficient. So and they go off if there's has a After motion. like, yeah. Awesome. It's very quick. Um, and the whole ceiling is redone in the hallway too as part of that process and all the HVAC and the ductwork. So you can see some of the new vents coming yeah. in and the new ductwork. Um, there's currently a temporary 
HVAC unit running on the top of the roof. The new one will go in on the 22nd because um, it comes in on the 21st. It will be up and on the roof before the kids even get off the bus on Friday morning. Okay. On the 22nd. That's what got worked out this morning. Um, and then it's really just one final walk through here and we will um, be good to, and then the controls will go live and the control updates will go live to control all that. Okay. Um, in Rochester, Merrill Mechanical was there when I left. The uh, new radiators for the classrooms just came in uh, yesterday morning. So they were there working on the installation when I left and it will be done by Monday. Um, there's still work going on in the boiler room um, and some final work going on uh, the controls part. But next week, yeah, next Tuesday will be the first boiler startup and um, test that they have to do that the company has to come and this, in. This is the um, this is the wood pellet. The wood pellets. This will just be to test the um, propane aspect of it. Okay, that's what I was wondering. We don't have wood pellets in it yet. Okay. The, the silo is there. Okay. Everything's there. There's just no wood pellets. Okay. So this is for the propane. Because they have to finish all the hookups to the classroom before yes. they can do those things. Um, so that's what's left, and the lighting is still um, left. And yeah, and then my big question to them today was who was coming to teach us how to use the controls integration because it's all web based. Yes, wow. absolutely. I, well, I know I was like, buttons. I don't want to be the person. No. I don't want to be the person that opens like the app or the website and all of a sudden it's like hot yoga in some poor teacher's classroom. Yeah. Which was kind of the example given my last year with the boiler. Though. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Perfect in my office. Yeah. Um, so that will come this fall as well. And they're still working on those pieces. Okay. It, it would be great if, you know, what, as we're getting closer to wrapping things up, when I, I actually just did a walkthrough with the first branch, some yeah. of their board members tonight at Tumbridge, but they were a little, they're a little bit farther along actually than where we are right here right now. But um, I'll put an email out to see who's interested Absolutely. and more it as a facilities task force and do a walkthrough with the DEI. Yeah. So that's where we are with those building updates. Okay, uh, Bill. Um, I know we don't have uh, an SU building and grounds capital improvement um, manager, and I think that's something that um, that we should be seriously considering if we're going to continue wisely um, taking care of our infrastructure and also planning and organizing the capital improvements to, to, to get us where we need to go. Uh, but short of that, who signs off on the after the walkthroughs? I mean, it's not you. Uh, I mean, that's not in your skill sets. That certainly wouldn't be in mine. Do, is uh, who's who's going to sign off that these uh, uh, what is it EEI whatever it is is um, they've done the job and their contractors have done the job. It'll be the board and, and like tonight was the board and, and the administration. That's who, who signed so off. Board, that I mean, the thing to know is is that everything's warranted, right? So like if there's an issue, they're gonna have to come back and fix it. But we don't have like a clerk of the works. No, not like a clerk of the works. And actually I would say to you, part of what this does is provide you a clerk of the works. Meaning EIs have people on the ground managing the subcontractors mm -hmm. all so summer, all right? It's so it's really, it, you're saying it's EEI is yes. doing that technical. That is part of what they built in. Okay, yeah, absolutely. It makes us feel better unless we have somebody yeah, they're representing the ones that us. They're representing all the no, they're definitely representing yeah. us. And, yeah. you know, I give you an example of Bethel. I did not like how there was some finishing done with a tile. And during an owner's meeting, yeah. I brought it up and they're like, you're right, we're going to get someone in there to fix the tile. But they, right. you know what I mean? They jumped on it. They so. answered very quickly. They've done gotcha. Sure. Thank you. That's great. Well, certainly, there's a, a certain amount of accountability because. You know, they're on the hook for the efficiency. If it's not done yeah. right, yes, that, that helps, doesn't it? Big time. What? Yeah, and they're already like they're meeting with First Branch to talk about what projects might we want to do in Chelsea next year. Like the thing about them is, I feel like they're really interested in building a long-standing relationship with the organization, acknowledging like there's been a bunch that we haven't done. 
in some of our buildings. So I think they're they're committed to making certain that they get it right and that we're satisfied, right? Like if something's not done right, that they're gonna. That's great. That makes sense for business wise for them and for our. Well, and it's part of why they were appealing originally as an organization. One, they did the performance contracting, which we needed, uh, and two. The fact that they were that we didn't have a clerk of the works or a head of maintenance that they were able to provide that oversight and guidance um, with their folks so that that we had that person overseeing these subcontractors. Mm -hmm. Turn the lights off. No one's moving. <laughs> it, oh, freaks go on? yeah, it freaks me off out the first time. I didn't understand what I was in my office and they all shut down on me. I mean, I will say that that <laughs> was, uh, I was really impressed with that. And then we would do walkthroughs on Thursdays and, and have yeah. regular Thursday owners meetings. But if I was impressed that I was really concerned throughout, like, who was going to stay on top of things. And I will say they were very responsive and really trying to stay on top of the subcontractors. Um, there was a paving job that we had done it in Bethel, and they picked up on right away. It wasn't good enough, and they made the, they had them come right back out. So that was just like that level of detail. I appreciate. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Is there any further questions or comments on the uh, EEI capital improvements? Okay, great. Let's move on to final planning for the RSU D uh, board retreat. So I've gotten some feedback from some board members and um, kind of rolled around some things with uh, Jamie about uh, possible direction for the um, retreat. Um, and I kind of wanted to put it out for some feedback from, from the whole board. But um, I was thinking we could kind of start out with um, discussing board culture, just kind of as a quick check in, you know, how how is everything going? Is there any needs that we have that we need to that needs to be met. Anything specific? Um, somebody needs some more training, or you know, um, just kind of a, a, a check in. Uh, then I thought we could uh, do kind of an overview of Robert's rules, um, sort of just how the flow of a meeting goes. Um, I know I think it'd be a good um, uh, good for us who've been on the board for a while, good for new members that are coming on to just um, you know kind of get some of that that meeting flow through Robert's rules and, and know the logistics of it. Um, uh, I would, it was brought up about um, our annual meeting and I think it's important to kind of just have a quick discussion about like why we are doing it the way we are doing it, why the voting is the way the voting is. Um, and then we can maybe discuss, is this really the most efficient way for us to do this? Should we explore doing it differently? We can't really change anything. We have to put it out to the voters and, and they would decide so it's nothing we can um, change in, in the retreat, but we can have a discussion about, about the why, really. Um, uh, also, it was mentioned to me about um, having a uh, our sub booth at local events, like um, we have a Harvest Fair coming or uh, other local farmers markets or other events I'm not sure what Stockbridge has. Um, I thought it'd be really beneficial if we got feedback on how the temperature fair booth went, um, what type of, you know, how how um, how that went, and then if we could kind of consider it's something we, how we could do it or if we want to do some type of booth like that at, at local events. Um, you know, get it out there, get out into the public. I, I think that's such a great idea. I and mean, we can't really expect them to come into our buildings, but we can get out there and celebrate what, what we're doing. Um, then we should, I was thinking we should re review our board goals. This is on a uh, mission, vision, mission statement and goals. And we go through um, reviewing it and then really start the conversation about what new goals we want. Um, and I think, you know, this would be a good, Good time for you know just all good discussion, you know white uh, whiteboard kind of just um, uh, and I was Jamie had mentioned the possibility of uh, getting a facilitator for that part of the meeting to really so everybody can really participate in you know this general discussion and just overall conversation and um, you think about that um, and that you guys all feel that we should suggest that uh, I think we should I um, I just think it would really. It would, 
you know, help us to have an open conversation, help uh, also at the end, a facilitator often helps recap some of the ideas that we've um, come up with, you know, some of the directions we've been talking about. And I also think that during that discussion, um, we can also talk about monthly readings and um, the policy familiarity, you know, like what, how we want to go, what direction we want to go in for those um, things. So uh, that would be, that was what I was kind of thinking. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any feedback and thoughts on, on that. That's on the 30th at 9 to 1230. So we talked about yeah, 9 to 1230. So we have one it'd be in Stockbridge. Can we get a um, full size table and not a school lunch table? Great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We'll, we'll be on the playground. Well, I, I, can, I, will, I will fold no, we a, have a plastic folding table. We have a plastic folding table, table I can bring. Um, and, um, and then lunch. Yeah. What, what was the date again? So it is Saturday, September 30th. Yep, all right, I already have it in there. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> I was going to say, last meeting, everybody agreed to it like that. There was no, oh, yeah, I'm available. What, what time is it again? 9 a.m. All right, I have it at 8. Okay, <laughs> 9 I'll to, be early. <laughs> to 12.30. Um, and we're in person on the creek. Is that, are you trying to do hybrid? Um, well, I... We'd like to do in person only. Uh, it's it's if JC is able to no, accommodate that makes sense. because That's why I was right. Um, it would be for her that uh, you know because I definitely want her to participate. Um, so I, I don't I don't know if I decide on that right now or if we can just no 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 we're just meeting up so I make sure okay. we have it. It's likely that I'll be there in person. I'm just still working on the logistics of that. <laughs> totally understand, JC. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I wanted to ask though. So Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I I did suggest that um you know yeah, I might to come actually and take in the you other up on room, that. You know, I'm still uh, to hear back from someone else. So yeah, I'll, I'll make it work. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's we great. don't. I mean, yes. <laughs> uh, Robert was on the school board uh, back when my sister, who is 33, was a baby, and he brought her in the little car seat and had her under the table, rocking her, you know, at the school board meeting. So, you know, we definitely, it is fine. All right. Well, it sounds like I'll be there. So thank you, though. <laughs> OK. Um, so uh, I do want to make sure that everybody has a copy to take a look at ahead of time of this uh, Rochester Stockbridge School Board um, uh, vision and mission statement and goals because this is what we'll you know be reviewing and revising and kind of working I, I really like this um format it's really bulleted you know it's a it's a measure and a comment it's what what are we going to do it's really um it's kind of, kind of specific and i really like that um and i was thinking that it really wouldn't hurt that prior to that meeting if we can, if just individually we can review the board governance principles and operating protocols, whether it's via this scorecard that we did last year, or just to kind of have it in mind, um, you know, just to be thinking of, of the goals for the upcoming year, and we can so it can be a little more familiar. With oh, yeah, something I forgot about. Um, do we go over our evaluation at this retreat? Like how we evaluate our self-evaluation? Um, we did that. We did that before. Was that this? Was, um, this the, was it the scorecard, or was that a yeah, different evaluation? Yeah, the, is it the scorecard. Yeah. And I'm trying to date here. We it's did down, it. For, it's down here at the bottom of last. It's or, October. Okay, we did it. We did it last year in the fall. So, I'd love to be able, uh, if it's okay with the chair, to uh, send out the, the same it. thing, and we. Yeah, I think we, we should. score ourselves, um, and then we we can share that. If that's okay, that is, a, is that, that okay? is perfect. I actually, Justine, was, I think that's a great idea. I was going to mention it earlier. Um, it actually, it, you know, this scorecard is exactly what our our principles and protocols are. So, right, you know, that will familiarize yourself. With it. <laughs> I'm just going to run into that. Oh yeah, you got another meeting. Good. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah, okay, I'm going to grab some water. Talk about Piling all of that into a handbook. Yeah, that's. I was kind of wondering. 
Because um, I feel like we have all of them, yeah. but we don't have the handbook. The handbook is, and that will hold everybody account. accountable. Yeah. You know? um, I'm just going to take a quick break as well I'm to get a glass of some more water. And uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. This is a Heat break. <laughs> Is it any better out there? It is. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> No, this, this doesn't include air conditioning. No, there it's should, just, there will be more you know, air moving through once the actual unit is hooked up. Right now, it's very, that thing's probably working over time right now, more than they thought. Um, they've been up on the roof all the time, checking it, just to make sure it's still functioning through all this. Okay. So. Sorry about that. We're talking about horses. Do you know Terry Farnham? I do know Terry. Very well. Um, Her grandson was here when I first started. Is that right? Yep. Good. How are you? He was a uh, baby. She's Her poor dad. Very popular. Summer game. 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 Yes, it was. <laughs> Lessons, where you want to call it, for kids that, that yeah. can use and uh, benefit from a connection with. Mm -hmm. I just thought I'm really impressed with their operation. And There's been a couple kids that have gone up there. I, I can think mm -hmm. of five off the end that have gone up. Jana's been up. Yeah. Um, um, she usually yeah. keeps me in the loop. She'll, it. Yeah. She'll call and ask questions and stuff. So, anyway, we were talking about the whether it makes we think there's an possible opportunity where a, a local um, rescue horse instructor or uh, a teacher um, and, and she has summer camps for kids sometimes all ages that can meet that would be a partnership we would like to try to develop with the SU and yes there's there's been uh, Kids from Stockbridge, I know from Rochester, Bethel. Um, yeah, and it's just the power of horses, and just being around with horses. Um, there could be a lot there. So, anyway, that's what that is. Absolutely. See if, can, yeah, see if we can get that explored. You know. Okay, great. So now we are back from our quick break. Um, we were just finishing up the final plans for the board retreat. Um, what is everybody's feeling about having a facilitator? Um, is it something that anybody finds beneficial or has any strong feelings, yay or nay? I found facilitators being very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, depends, really on, a plug for depends on the facilitator. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think so, it seems good. I feel like we have control over uh, the facilitator. I mean, Basically, just having someone, would they be also like recording and doing the whiteboard too? Because what Ethan did last year was really helpful, but he was also part of the conversation. So I feel right. like well, that, just like that, but maybe not having pressure to, you know, think. Well, that's what I was thinking is because I, I, I liked the whiteboard of just kind of like, let's just get stuff out and, and, and brainstorm on. Um, and so for you know myself to be up there trying to write down exactly, spell everything correctly, you know, um, it kind of takes away from, from me being part of the meeting. So I would yes. see them doing that. And also, um, you know, I think they would help us if, you know, as we are going along, if we start kind of spinning out, they can kind of stop and recap us. Yes. Okay, we were just talking Thanks. about this. We were, and you know, then we eat just to help focus us. Yeah. Um, so that, that, if, if that's agreeable to everybody, I guess I would like to suggest to um, uh, Jamie to find a facilitator. Yeah, I like that idea. Thank okay. you for thinking that up. That's, that's good. That's okay. help. Cynthia, thumbs up. As long as they don't take our voice away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, 
and you guys are, we're gonna have lunch. Somebody's yeah. gonna orchestrate. He and I will orchestrate. Yeah. Okay. So the thirtieth, nine to twelve thirty in Stockbridge. Everybody write it down. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be here at eight. <laughs> <laughs> With lunch to follow. Okay, great. Um, great. Moving on to seven three. Are you able to speak to the yep. seven three? So we've had the roofing company up there twice now. Once the end of June, and then again in. They were just there maybe two or three weeks. I think it was two weeks ago. They were just there. Supposedly it's fixed. What what is it? Was it a rubber roof or? It, I don't. Uh, you're testing my knowledge here. <laughs> uh, my facilities knowledge has grown tremendously. Um, I there. I just think it's older roof and it needed it. They patched some yeah. spots. Probably where what are coming through. Yeah, fence, something so. along those lines. Mm -hmm. So they've been up there and patching. I don't think it's really rained hard since then. I have asked Jesse to be over there checking after each rain. And we've been doing that a lot just because of the tip of summer we've had in general. But um, and who is so the roofing company? Uh, I'll go get Vermont it. Roofing? I think so. Yeah. We've had a couple of different cool. people over, but that's the What is now did they have any input as to what they thought there was left in that? If they did, they didn't share it with me. They might they have did. shared it with uh Jesse, but I haven't heard a timeline recently. Yeah. Usually I more frequently get a timeline on that elementary school than I do. Yeah. Like we've pat patched it a lot. There's <laughs> so much we can do. Yeah. Those words did not come out of anybody's mouth on this particular yeah. job. But so this was for the, the auditorium. Leave, auditorium leave right in front of this. Yes, kind of exactly. Yeah. So we haven't so seen anything the recently. We just keep checking. Right. It, it wasn't a huge loop, but there'd be a puddle. Right, right, right. Yeah. You could see where the puddle had. Right. on the floor so um so that just happened a couple weeks ago um and that was the update okay so, so um just as a note uh, sort of a follow-up on parker had sent us an email about temperature monitors yep and the problem i mean wi-fi temperature monitors are expensive but this is i believe I, I think it's either by uh, I didn't look at the specs specifically, but you have to go around each one download the data. Um, but I think the, the repurposing committee is ready to fund them. Basically, the function of it is is not to report on it being temperatures too low, but more of them being too high. Okay, um, in certain areas. For, in certain areas and mm -hmm. wasting mm -hmm. heat. Yeah. Right. Um, but we're if the, the, the committee is ready to, to to fund it and to provide these so that's separate then from the thermostat itself right right now there there exists a low temperature warning right system. and that's hardwired so that's our hardwired so that's yeah. a, a separate but we have you know we've had you know sometimes reports of failures of the temperature controls and we get it very hot like the auditorium's too hot or unnecessarily hot. And so I will, or sometimes the thermostat is wrong, right? And right. So, so this did just, save us last Christmas. It went off and we got a phone call and it saved us that it just blown through how much was fuel was left because we had that, it went from like 50 degrees to that's when it plummeted. Yeah. And it caught it and saved all the This is the low temperature. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Sensor. They call you. So these sensors you're talking about are to be placed on. Uh, more locations around the high school, and uh, you, you said somebody has to go in and physically download the information. Right. Okay. Um, and I'll, the, I'll review Parker's. Okay. Parker's um, uh, recommendation to keep okay. it ahead. But the repurposing committee is willing to fund the purchase of these devices. I, I believe so. I, they've mentioned it before, but I'll recommend okay. them. Okay. Now, does that um, increase the um, uh, somebody's workload? To, go in there and download this information? Well, yeah, I mean, we figured that, that that's not an unnecessarily low to put on Jesse, so we would provide volunteer work to periodically go in and download the data. 
It's just to give a general, how is the building doing? Mm -hmm. And I do know that the repurposing committee um, in the past has volunteered to help with walkthroughs or anything to help take right. the load off of Jesse, um, you know, or anybody who is, is um, uh, needing to do monitoring yeah. in that. So I don't know how that could work or if that would work with you. But yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's really at the point. So Ploofs did come and is in the process of installing those extra blood wire pumps. Like pumps or whatever that only one was working on the boilers. Oh, no, circulators. Circulators, thank you. So they should that should help as well as my understanding. To be well, it's, it consistent. gives us back up in case exactly. we have another yeah. failure. So, but no, I mean that's really all there is right now. It's to monitor right. that. Yeah. I mean, there's fuel in the tank. Right. Well, the, the since the repurposing committee is helping fund the oil. We're very interested in having the, the building operate efficiently. Right. So that's, that's what the that's whole possible, right. is. Okay. Um, yeah. So do you have a contact or need a contact to be able to, you know, if there is an opportunity for a volunteer um, help that you would be able I think to it's just about to? whenever they want to get figuring out whatever schedule is best to based on what these monitors recommend, mm -hmm. I guess. Is right. how it would work? Okay. Right. But if and you then, need other help otherwise, yeah. you can contact us. None comes to mind, but also we're just yeah. trying to get everything up yeah. and running out. Some of the things on your mind right now, as they're trending. So well, I mean, there's like the, the volunteers to do clean up before. Right, they came and really helped clean up for clean Suzuki. Clean up before Suzuki. So yeah, right. That sort of thing. Yeah, so there definitely is a, a, a group that there's wants a group. to support yeah. this um, as it's open is there. So please yeah. utilize yeah. them. Just a couple notes since we're in mentioning the repurposing, they will have a booth, uh, or we will have a booth at the, the uh, Harvest Fair, okay. um, which will be manned all day. And um, also, I should uh, mention that we have officially retained a lawyer to um, to the um, the nonprofit. Okay. Oh, great. Yeah, that's, that's big news. Right. Exciting. Yeah. yeah. So I just did that yesterday. And the harvest oh, is this Saturday? That's great. Right. Ready or sign? Yep. Yep. Thank you. Fortunately, I will not be there. My company has provided a company trip to the Great Escape. So, oh, oh, oh. so my, my kid just. <laughs> your kid makes the Great Escape. <laughs> she was really, she was torn. She really, she's tradition, and the harvest fair is very traditional. Right. So, um, Okay, uh, is there any further uh, questions or comments on the um, auditorium roof or the temperature monitoring? All right, well then let's move on, make sure nobody up there. Okay, let's move on to the uh, book study, chapter eight. I thought this chapter was very timely as we were planning the retreat. <laughs> yes. Um, and there's some, some pretty great ideas in it. And um, as I was uh, reviewing our um, goals um, and reading about this governance handbook, um, I really see that we, that we could do something there. We could get this stuff together into a handbook, as Pat was saying. Simple document. Yeah. yeah, get a lot of the, right. So um, this is a, a really great chapter. <laughs> and I think part of that, too, we were talking about would be really nice to have you know, the list of what our subcommittees are, and what their responsibilities are, when they should be meeting, because I feel like we have some subcommittees that just haven't really done mm -hmm. too much. When do we talk about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and at what, at what point, what is needed to disband a subcommittee? I mean, yeah. if they are made for a specific, created for a specific purpose and that purpose is over, are they done, or, sure. or yeah. uh, does it? Do, do they need to have a, some official way of disbanding, yeah. or yeah. can they morph into another? You know. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that's that's a really good point. No, um, it, it's getting it all together. Just all the information, everything that we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of like the yes, issue has kind of come together with this new board member handbook kind of thing. Mm -hmm. This is like the next level, kind of. Yeah. You know, this is targeted towards uh, our side. Our side, just for us. You know, this yeah. is, 
This is our, goals. This is our, our goals. goals. I'm putting one together right now for my company. Okay. Um, and <laughs> well, ago, I'm not. I, I hired an HR consultant. <laughs> right. There's a lot of stuff that has Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I hear you. Yeah. So years ago, um, one of the board members started the, a, a board calendar, which I really liked. Um, just kind of generally said, our um, annual meetings, this, you know, it's always this date in May. Um, come our December meeting, we should be talking about budget. You know, some things that just are always going to be in specific meetings yeah. and specific times a year. Um, and I don't know if in in this hand, this this governance handbook would be the place for it. Um, but I and I was going to bring it. I will bring it up at the retreat for us to talk about. Um, but I think that's valuable just to help keep. Keeps you, on track. Keeps you on track and you yeah. kind of know what's to come and I mean why yeah. reinvent the wheel yeah you know <laughs> no and plus if we have the handbook then you're just only growing upon that it's not like yeah you said you're not reinventing anything right. it's just continually growing yeah oh, building so when, when you have turnover of board members you're, yeah you're, exactly you have continuity yeah, yeah. excellent so the in this essence is that the handbook um separate from our goals or and the goals would go into the handbook i think the thing. goals would go in i think and everything that we're working on would to, merge into the handbook yeah. we could have one of our goals could be is to develop and, a, handbook. Uh, a handbook for this year mm -hmm. and then um our goals and our protocols and our governance um principles all go into this okay. handbook, this handbook. Yeah. absolutely yeah. and that's yeah. where it's okay. kind of tailored well, like right here you know the description of the board's moral imperative it might be different than absolutely the more generic of the su so I, it's really a good idea and it gets us back in that and i can again well i don't know about you but um you know that helps that's a real absolutely. helpful thing oh yeah i gotta be ready <laughs> or let's let's make sure we get it on the agenda um because that's a lot of it we have packed agendas so yeah, I think that idea is fantastic. Yeah. Other ideas and comments about Chapter 8, Robert? Robert? I, well, oh. go ahead. I was, uh, I like this section about the discussion meetings. I, I was thinking, oh, that'd be kind of nice to have that, like a more informal uh, bit of meetings where we're not like, you know, yeah. necessarily on the be our best behavior, uh, just to be able to. Uh, uh, I out. Uh, maybe I was thinking, you know, like maybe we could do it, you know, three times a year or a little more, or and see how it goes. So we can kind of like not always have to do all this hard work and have as much pressure every time we meet, but have a chance to talk things through. I, I liked, you know, that that gave me a good idea. So I don't know if anybody else is interested in maybe doing well, that. Okay. I underlined boards are expected to meet in highly structured, agenda-driven meetings. Most yeah. difficult environment for open and candid discussion. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm yeah. right there with you. I, I definitely think, um, yeah, I think this can be brought up at our retreat as well. So yep. To yep. I think more. So that's great. Yes, Robert. Uh, something I think we left off on our board retreat is uh, academic goals. Reviewing our academic goals. So. Because yeah. We, we set some and we were expecting that each year we would you know, get increases yeah. in achieving, you know, a parity with the, and excelling the state standards. And so I guess we just need to gather some documentation of where. Well, we need the state testing not to be embargoed anymore so I can share it with you. That would be the first yeah, we step. Can, uh, <laughs> well, it, we absolutely can. And then, yeah. and, uh, we can do it in the CRs. We can see in the comparison. Um, yeah. And and every school is different. We have different challenges, everything else like that. But I think it really makes sense in checking in how we do it. And I think that is actually the number, our number one goal is academic achievement. Yeah. So it fits right it fits in right there to, to the goals. Right. Absolutely. So, so far as I can tell, is, and I don't believe is that we're doing really, really well, but um, we need to look towards the future. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and along with that is looking towards the future is saying, okay, mm -hmm. what resources do we need mm -hmm. to achieve that? And that's something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that is addressed at JVN to Lynch. 
absolutely. And that kind of, the answer to that kind of helps shape uh, where our budget's going. Mm -hmm. Our budget's supposed to follow what our needs are. And our fundamental are our kids learning. And if there's some gap that a budget is a position or a program or whatever the case is. So uh, I think it's very timely to ask that question. Absolutely. Well, I think we're going to have a lot of great things to talk about at our retreat, so I'm excited about that. Just of us starting to talk here now, yeah. I already feel some good energy. Um, is there any other comments or um, on chapter eight of our book study? Okay. Um, no action items. Uh, is there any new hires or resignations? Uh, new hires. We have two pair of educators that will be starting um, on Monday. Joanne McDonald. McDonald is one of them. And oh, Emily, really? Yeah. Oh, she's great. Going to be in the kindergarten first grade classroom. And Emily Denny is the other. Nice. Okay. Is what? Is oh. the other pair that's going to be supporting a student um, one on one. And then. Um, one shift, I guess, that happened, it's not a new hire, but Heather Hendershaw is both in Stockbridge and Rochester now. She's the four, five, six literacy teacher because uh, John McGowan is still here as interventionist and librarian, but it's stepped back to part-time, which was something that he was happy right. But Heather has been trained when she was a para and librarian, and now she uh, will be here and in Rochester. Okay. So that's a shift from August. Um, not necessarily a new hire, but. Right. Um, Prior, she was just in Stockbridge. She was just in Rochester. Just in Rochester. Yeah. And that's uh, literacy. Four, five, six literacy and humanities. Great. Great. Well, that's exciting. Glad. It is. Glad all of these roles are being filled. Um. <laughs> Is there any public comments? Um, uh, just how how do oh. you feel, Lindy, about the new hires so far to date? It seems like it's going really well. They seem to fit right in. Folks, I think what's unique about Rochester and Stockbridge is even though we partner everybody with a mentor, everybody's willing to support uh, new folks to make sure that they're, yeah, it's great to see they Kind of jump in without being asked which i think That's is super helpful um so it seems it, i don't want to jinx myself but it just feels good and it seems really calm and successful. so sure mm -hmm. only about a weekend but um it's, it seems like good energy That's great. yeah it's good Sorry to put you out there. No. Is there any other comments or questions on the new hires? Okay. Public comment. Okay, no public comment. So our next regular scheduled meeting is Monday, October 2nd at 5.30 at the Rochester campus and via Google Meets. And of course we will be meeting in Stockbridge on September 30th from 9 to 12.30 for our retreat. Um, is there any future agenda items that you would, would like me to put on uh, at this point for our October meeting? Well, we might, we might want to have just a, a brief thing of how, how did our retreat go? Absolutely. Uh, we slept on it for 48 hours or something like that just to share maybe that. Useful. Okay. Okay, well, if anybody comes up with any future agenda items, you know mine or Jamie's email. If there's no further business, then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Aye. All right. Thanks. Bye.